Right, today we are either going to make pizza or for pastry bread. Your um, teacher will have given you a recipe and you have the choice. The difference is all the toppings go on top of the pizza, but with the focaccia bread, all the flavourings go actually into the bread. So if you're making a pizza, you will need the square of tray, or if you've got your own pizza tray from home, that's a good idea to bring that in, because then you can just cover it in foil and take your pizza home whole. And if you're making the focaccia bread, you will need two of the sandwich tins. Whatever you're making, you will need to lightly grease your tray or your tin. You'll then need to get your oven on, and your oven needs to go on different temperatures depending which you're making. For the pizza, it needs to be gas 7 220. For the vacation bread, it needs to be gas 6 200. So if there's three of you cooking in the kitchen, and one of you is doing the focaccia bread, then you use the top oven, which only has one rack, and the two pizzas use the bottom oven that has two racks, and vice versa if there's two people making the focaccia bread. So, if you remember, half the kitchen is electric cookers. You must put the red switch on, on the wall, before you turn your oven dials to 200 or 220. With the gas cookers on the other half of the kitchen, you need to open the oven door, you need to turn the oven switch right the way around to the power sign, press it in, check you have a flame, and then turn it back to gas six or seven, depending on what you're cooking. You must preheat the oven for baked products. So, Next thing we need to do is we need to measure our flour. Now you will take your bowl and your flour to the measuring tables, the digital scales, the one side turns them on and off and the other side turns the units. You need to put your bowl on first before you turn it on, otherwise it will weigh your bowl as well. You need to make sure on the unit side it's on grams, and for the pizza, we need 250 grams of strong flour. Now the reason the flour is strong, or bread flour, is it guarantees a certain amount of gluten in that flour. And gluten is the two proteins, glutenin and gliadin, when mixed with water, form gluten, which makes your dough stretchy, so it will trap the carbon dioxide produced by the yeast. So 250 grams. Too much. There's no need to sieve it because the air is going to be incorporated from your yeast, not through sieving. Okay, you can use wholemeal flour, which will, as long as it's strong, or bread flour, which will increase the fibre, or you can use 50-50, where you use half wholemeal and half um, white. Now, the yeast you're going to use, yeast is a single cell microorganism. Okay, and it needs four things to produce carbon dioxide. When yeast ferments, it produces carbon dioxide and alcohol. The alcohol is burnt off during cooking, when we bake bread, and we trap the carbon dioxide in our bread product. In the brewing industry, we get rid of the carbon dioxide and we trap the alcohol. Now this is fast action yeast. And you need one sachet, seven grams of fast action yeast. Please make sure it says fast action on your package because it has a catalyst in it, which is vitamin C, ascorbic acid, and that speeds up the reaction of the yeast so we can make it in the time of the lesson. 
If you just used ordinary yeast without the catalyst, it would not rise in the time we've got in the lesson. So we put the whole sachet in, and then we're going to add to that. Now it says in your recipe, a teaspoon of salt, but because we've got these measuring spoons, they're a bit larger, so half a teaspoon is sufficient. You do need salt, the salt is there to aid the development of the gluten to make our bread stretchy and trap our carbon dioxide. Now I said yeast needed four things. It needs moisture, it needs warmth, it needs food, and it needs time. It gets the food from the flour and also sugar if you make a sweet bread product. And it's going to get the warmth and the moisture by using warm hand hot water. If you use cold water, the yeast will not react very quickly and you'll have a pretty flat pizza or focaccia bread. If you use boiling water, that could kill the yeast. And we don't want to kill the yeast until it goes in the oven. So we we'll use hand hot water. Now the taps at the school are sufficiently hot enough for hand hot water. And we need 175 millilitres. Now 175 millilitres is quite difficult to read on some of our measuring jugs. But if you go to the fluid ounce side, six is quite easy to read. Six fluid ounces or 175 millilitres. Okay. And to that, we're going to add a tablespoon of olive oil. Now, some recipes you will rub in um, butter or margarine, soft spread. Other recipes you will use oil. Now the reason we use the oil is that yeast, when it ferments, creates these air bubbles of carbon dioxide. Now sometimes it will create large air bubbles, sometimes it will create small air bubbles or medium air bubbles. To make sure we get an even texture, we add the fat to restrict the yeast to making even sized bubbles. Now, if you're making the focaccia bread, now is the time before you add your water and your oil to add your ingredients such as garlic, herbs, cherry tomatoes, cheese that's going in the middle. I like my pizza base to be flavoured. So I'm going to add a little bit of basil, about a teaspoon of basil, to my pizza base because I'm making pizza. So I'm now going to add my warm and hot water. Okay. Now you're aiming for a soft slightly sticky dough. You're not aiming for porridge, and that will happen if you read the wrong measurements. And you're not aiming for a dry dough, because if there's not enough water, then the yeast will not ferment. So, once you've got your water mixed in, you need to make sure that you've got all your flour, in your dough before you tip it out and it should be soft, slightly sticky. So once you've tipped your dough out, you are going to put your bowl into soak. The original glue is flour and water and if you don't put your bowl into soak, then it will be very difficult to clean at the end of the lesson. Now you're not going to be selfish and just dump it in the sink because there's three of you working there. You're going to put it on the 
draining board with hot water in and a little bit of um, wash that liquid. You're then going to wash your hands if you've got dough on them. And then you're going to knead your dough for five minutes. Now, to knead the dough, you need to get a flour dredger off the centre table. You're going to put a little bit of flour on your hands, a little bit of flour on your work surface, and you're going to knead your dough. And the way you knead your dough is you fold, you push, you turn, you fold, you push, you turn, you fold, you push, you turn. Now you can do this either with your knuckles or you can do it with the palm of your hand. It's up to you. And you're going to knead this dough for five minutes. Kneading the dough will develop the gluten so it's nice and stretchy to trap the carbon dioxide for five minutes. If you don't need the dough, it will be very wrinkly uh, bread you produce. And sometimes when you produce some wrinkly bread, it means you haven't kneaded it for long enough. So five minutes knead it, the best thing to do is to look at the clock on the wall and keep going. It's very therapeutic. Fold, push, turn. Fold, push, turn. It will get stickier. That is because your yeast is starting to work. Okay, but don't be tempted to put too much flour on it because you'll dry it out and your yeast will stop working because yeast needs food, warmth, moisture and time. And that's why we are making the base first before we prepare our toppings. But with the focaccia bread, you will prepare your fillings before you make the bread. And while this is going on, you should have a worksheet in your booklet about the functions of ingredients in bread to fill in. Your flour is the framework of the bread and the bulk ingredient. Your yeast makes the bread rise. You need the water to bind and to help the yeast ferment. It needs to be warm so the yeast works quickly. Your fat restricts the action of the yeast and creates an even texture. And obviously if you put any herbs in, that's your flavouring to add interest. Now when you think your bread is sufficiently um, kneaded, you will be able to press your finger on it and it will bounce back. Not poke it in like that, it won't work. Just press it gently on top and it will bounce back. And then your bread is ready to roll. Now, if you are making the focaccia bread, you are going to cut your dough into two and you are going to roll out two circles that will fit in these tins. Once they're in there, you're going to put it on your warm oven and leave it to rise to double the size. Once it's risen to double the size, you're going to poke holes in it, drizzle it with a teaspoon of olive oil and pop it in the oven. The pizza, however, will have that time to rise while you are um, preparing your toppings. So, to get it perfectly circular, that's what we're looking for today. And that is one of your marking criteria. The first thing you need to start off with is a pretty circular shape. 
flour on the work surface and lightly flour your rolling pin. Now, you're going to roll in the middle. If you roll over the edge, you're going to make the edges much thinner. You're going to turn it a quarter of a turn. Roll in the middle again. You're going to turn it a quarter of a turn. Roll in the middle again. Quarter of a turn. Roll in the middle again. Now it is stretchy, so if it's going out of shape, just stretch it back into shape. Now if you want to make a stuffed crust pizza, you will have to bring at least another 50 grams of cheese and you will have to roll your pizza to two inches bigger, which is about five six centimetres bigger than you actually need it. So a nice circle, it's going out of shape, as I said, stretch it so you get it in shape. And you're rolling it as large as you possibly can, but no larger than your tip. A nice circular shape. Quarter turn roll, quarter turn roll. Only rolling in the middle. So, if I was stuffing this, I would then pop it on my tray. It would fall over my tray because it was too big. I would then put a row of cheese around it, water with my pastry brush and then fold it over and press firmly. But I'm not stuffing mine so I just want it as big as I can possibly get it on my tray. And because yeast needs warmth to ferment, you're going to put this on top of your oven because your oven is warming while you prepare the ingredients. Okay? Obviously, the longer you leave it, the more it will rise, the thicker your base will be. And as a third of your intake of food should be from starchy carbohydrate, for a balanced pizza, you are far better to have a thick based pizza. So, clean your area up and then you're ready to prepare your toppings. Now I'm just going to make a margarita pizza, so I'm just using um, cheese and tomato. But I'm using two types of cheese. I'm using cheddar and I'm using fresh mozzarella. Now the cheddar I'm going to grate, the fresh mozzarella I'm going to slice. So I need a sharp knife, which I haven't got out. Now the reason I'm using two cheeses is that I can actually add more cheese because the mozzarella doesn't spread as much as the cheddar so it won't spread off the sides of my pizza. If you're stuffing your crust, you've got a nice well in the centre to put whatever you want. Now, if you are going to put any meat on it, the meat must be heat treated. So ham is already cooked, salami has already been heat treated. But if you bring in chicken, it needs to be cooked chicken. Vegetables, they can go on raw because they will cook in the time it takes to pizza to cook in the oven. Now I grated my cheese on the large hole of the grater. That's my cheddar. You can actually get hard mozzarella as well if you wish. And then my mozzarella which is preserved in brine which is salty water. You need to cut the corner of the packaging to drain the brine out and then you can slice it or cube it, it's entirely up to you. 
So I'm going to slice mine up in circles. Notice I'm using the whiteboard to prepare my cheese, not the green or the red board. I'm slicing my mozzarella. And that's my cheese ready. Just wash my knife and then I'm going to prepare my tomato. So I'm changing to a green board to prepare my tomatoes. Now I'm thinking about the pattern I'm going to make, so I'm not going to cut them down like that. I'm going to cut them across the stem. Not use the end bit, it's not attractive. I'm using the bridge and the claw method, remember, for safe chopping. Now you could add pepper, onion, sweet corn, mushrooms, all of which can go on raw and they will be cooked by the time your pizza is ready. And by adding a selection of vegetables, you're also making your pizza much more balanced. So I'm going to discard those and there's my tomato bit. Right. I'm now going to assemble my toppings. Now, whether you believe that pizza is um, originated in Italy or Greece, there's a lot of argument about that, it was a handheld snack. Therefore, it had a crust, so you didn't burn yourself on the toppings. So we need to leave a crust. Now you have either got pizza topping, tomato puree, or a tin of chopped tomatoes. If you've got a tin of chopped tomatoes, before you start, you need to open your tin and drain the juice out. So just put your tin in, your sieve, and leave it to drain while you're making your pizza. If you've got a tube of tomato puree, it has a little seal on the top if it's new. If you turn your lid of your tomato puree over and push it down, it will open your tomato puree. Now you want approximately two to three tablespoons of tomato puree. It's quite bitter, so don't be tempted to put too much on. You want approximately half a jar of pizza topping. And once you've drained your tin of chopped tomatoes, you just want the stuff in the sieve that's left. Use a spoon to spread it and make sure you leave a crust. Now, if you do not cover your tomato with the cheese, then as it cooks, it will go black. So you want to make sure that you don't push it right to the end of your crust, because you want it covered with the cheese. You can, if you wish, and you don't like tomato puree, you could use a barbecue sauce or a sweet chilli sauce instead. There's nothing to stop you being creative with the recipe. Now, I think I need just a little bit more, because I've got some gaps there. Just to fill in my gaps. And also, there will be a selection of herbs out for you to experiment with. And if you wish to, I've got basil in my bread base. And I'm going to put a bit of parsley in with my tomato puree and black pepper. If you use a pizza topping, it's probably got 
herbs, garlic in it already. You don't need to add any more. So I'm going to add some parsley to my chopping. Just to give it a little bit more flavour. And a bit of colour. Then I'm going to place on my sliced mozzarella. In a pattern. in between so one in the middle and then I'm going to fill my gaps with my grated cheese this is going to go in the oven for 15 to 25 minutes and it will depend where in the oven you put it as to how fast it will cook. If you are the top shelf of the bottom oven, check it after 15 minutes. It will take 15 to 20 minutes to cook. If you are the bottom shelf, when the one on the top shelf has been taken out, move yours to the top shelf to brown your cheese and leave it for another five minutes. So you need to make sure that halfway through your lesson, your pizza is in the oven. While it is in the oven, you're going to wash up, tidy away, and get your um, booklet to fill in your progress page. So, the last thing I'm going to put on my pizza is some black pepper. My oven is hot, therefore I am going to need oven gloves to put it in the oven. Also, please make sure that you position it correctly so you have the little lip of the tin to pull out and when you come to take it out, you pull the whole rack out. So put your oven door stable, tray in the oven, don't push it too far back with the gas ovens, otherwise the rack will burn because the flames at the back. And you're going to leave that in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes if you're the top of, uh, top of the bottom oven. If you're the bottom, it will probably take 20 to 25. Turn it off. 